Welcome, everybody. This is Construction Executives Live. I am your host, Jeremy Owens. I am owner and founder of U.S. Construction Zone and Three Generations Improvements in sunny Folsom, California. We will be a balmy 89 degrees today. Um, thank you guys all for being here. Uh, we have a great show. Um, I have a couple quick updates for you um, on the uh, U.S. Construction Zone side. You know, our goal at U.S. Construction Zone is to bring more education to you guys this year. That's part of why we uh, the reason we started Construction Executives Live. We're looking for those unique opportunities and ways for us to, you know, connect, collaborate, you know, uh, start mentorship and just start the conversation. So one quick platform update for you guys. Um, we have the ability to set up private communities for you now. So if you have a large team, if you're a trade organization, or if you're a, a group of like-minded people and you want to start your own private community within our platform, we can do it. So if you have any questions about that um, or would like some further information, feel free to email me at jeremy at usconstructionzone.com. So getting to the topic today, um, we're going to be talking about a commodity to collaboration. We're going to discuss strategies on how we can change the way we develop and converse with our team and labor force and attract new talent. Um, we have two great speakers. If you're not familiar with Aramid, I know this is new to a lot of us over on the right side. You'll see a little chat function. Everybody can chat um, if you want amongst each other during the presentation. You can talk talk as much smack about me as you want. I don't care. The Q&A button is the, is the third button over there. That is the questions for the speakers. Feel free to drop a Q&A in there. Matt will help me put that on the screen at the appropriate time. Um, also, there might be a poll question as well that pop up. So without further ado, let's get to our, our first speaker. Um, Annette Genota is an award-winning architect, artist, and a, quote, workplace whisperer. She focuses on enhancing the human spirit through strategizing and planning multi-sensory design and art moments throughout her projects. Seeking a more expansive way for architects and builders to work, Annette created Building From Within, a presentation model that shares the value of crafting design processes, founded collaboration, trust, and authenticity. She explores how to challenge and reframe common assumptions in ways that honor team relationships, along with bringing more joy and meaning into our work. So please help me welcome Annette Genota. Thank you for being here. Hi, Jeremy. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and just a quick peek behind the curtains for everybody else. We've had a lot of conversations on Zoom, and you know we could probably talk for hours and, and bore everybody. We'd be having a good time, but everybody else would be like, come on, all right, enough. So I'm going to try to keep this to 25 minutes, so I'll do my best to manage that, but we may go off on a few tangents here, correct? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let me let, let us uh, all know, how did you get started in the AEC industry? So um, I'm, I'm getting some feedback here. Is that, are you hearing that? I am not. It could be, okay. maybe try taking your uh, earbuds out and see if that works. Not sure if it will or won't. Better? Not better. Oh, okay, yeah, that's better. Nope. I'm getting a little feedback now too. Welcome Sorry. to live live shows, people. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Um, I hear you fine. You, you still getting feedback? I'll, I am, but I'll do my best. Okay. Um, so I'm an architect, installation artist, writer. Um, I got started in the field climbing trees. <laughs> and building doll houses. And so I feel many people are called to the industry as kids and um, that's what I did. So I studied architecture and uh, eventually went into interior design. Nice, nice. Yeah. So how did you get the term workplace whisperer? How, where did that come from? That's such a unique thing. So I, I started out as a joke. Um, because I'm pretty intuitive. And when I work with my clients and staff, um, I, it, it, I was kind of teased about it because I think a lot of people have this, when you go into a space, you can kind of feel, oh, this feels off, um, yeah. kind of know what to do to remedy it. Um, and then I think I just, sorry, it's, it's really hard to talk with this oh, feedback, but I'm going to do my best. Um, and I came from a generation that you had to decide what you wanted to do with the rest of your life, like at 15, 16. And 
I stressed about it so much when I was in high school. So I, I obsessed about vocation and whatever I choose, it has to be right. Um, Cause it's going to be my whole lifetime and I can't make a change. And when I went into, when I studied architecture, I stumbled into, I went to use bookstore and stumbled across a book called Working by Studs Terkel. And it was this really elegant series of interviews asking people, you know, about what they did all day and what they chose to do for work. And it, it had me thinking so much about how people choose what they go into, what they do all day at work, how they feel about it. And I like to use my talents to, to bring out the best in other people. Right. So you're kind of like my wife in that you, so you, you have a lot of empathy, right? So yes. when you walk in the room, you kind of feel energy, you feel, uh, she's the same way. It drives me crazy because like, she's <laughs> like, do you feel that? I'm like, feel what? I feel <laughs> cold in here, you know, but it's, it's a, it's a unique skill that, I mean, I can see her going through those moments of highs and lows based on the energy of the room. And I'm like, I don't necessarily have that skill. Um, but it's, it's, I guess a blessing and a curse, right? It's a blessing and a curse. Um, and the hardest thing is knowing what's yours and what's somebody else's. Ooh, uh, that's yeah. tough. I mean, I have enough as it is. I don't know if I want to carry anybody else's crap. <laughs> it's involuntary. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, were you also the type that, uh, did your parents really push you to college or, or did you kind of guide yourself that way? Um, my parents nudged me. It was actually, it was just assumed. Although my father, he's, he's a doctor, but he started out in trade school. You know, he was from the South side of Chicago. He learned how to weld and, um, on, on, it was like marine welding or something when he was young. Got it. Got yeah. it. So did you, did you always want to get into architecture or was that something that, you know, you found in college, you, you said you kind of needed to decide early, I guess, when did you decide that was your, your career path? In high school, I had a couple of good friends that I was really stressed about making this decision. It was so silly to think that you have to know what you're going to do for the rest of your life at that age. But um, they know, observed that I really was sensitive to place and environment. And, and um, they brought up in different ways, like, hey, do you know about interior design? Or what about architecture? You're always walking around critiquing the buildings around you. Right. And then that's when I learned about the profession. Interesting. So, I mean, how did that, the human spirit, I guess, that component to, to your work life, when did that start to take hold and, and kind of change the way you went to work, I guess? Um, I, when I was in architecture school, um, AutoCAD and computer aided design was just entering the industry and everybody was really excited about it because, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to save you time. You're going to have more life balance. You can actually spend more time designing right. and asking the whys of why we're doing this versus that. Um, but after being in the industry for decades, um, seeing that technology has has consumed us in a way, yeah, and and I started seeing like we stopped asking why, and everybody's asking, well, how do you get this program to work? What about that program? And we're we're these human beings with. Mm whatever we came in here with and we're trying to keep up pace with machines we've lost control and i think a lot of people are suffering because of it i i totally agree it's like the fine line of um you know we want technology to, to make us more efficient which which in a lot of ways it is but it can't replace the people connection and you have that hard balance where you have to communicate with builders and and your design team to make it all come together and like you said you your favorite contractors are the ones that you can communicate with, you know, the ones that you guys can bounce ideas off of. And instead of it just being, here's your design, go do it. 
you know, yeah, go build this, go, go build that. And then they look at you like you're crazy. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, then there's no program for that. There's no, the collaboration needs to happen. Right. So, you know, I guess that's where we got to make sure we keep that, that human connection in there. And, and, and Matt, when you get a chance, put that poll question up that we had and, and that I'm curious about um, how, how do you find joy at work? And, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just put that poll question up there. You guys can answer uh, whenever you want, but I, I'm curious because, you know, obviously, um, you know, we all have different things that make us joyful at work. For me, it's, it's the relationships and collaboration solving problems. Those types of things are, are what kind of build me up. I am not built up by a boss jumping down my throat or, you know, some of the old school ways in construction. I, I grew up, I'm the third generation. So management back when my grandpa was growing up is quite a bit different than now. And that's part of the reason I had to be my own boss was I couldn't handle it <laughs> basically. So what do you, uh, what do you, what would you answer to that? And how, what would, uh, how would you answer that question? Of what, how do you find joy at work? Oh, um, yeah. So building within, I talk a lot about it being safe to express joy at work and to be authentic. And, um, I grew up in a Catholic, um, I had Catholic upbringing. And so I had this mentality, like you have to suffer to succeed or your value is based on how much misery <laughs> you're expressing. Right. And when I was um, entering into the field, I, one of my bosses was this really talented designer who um, had fun while he was working. He joked a lot. He had a sense of humor, even at meetings with clients. I was utterly confused by him. Like he's, he's having fun and he's letting everybody know. And so I would, I, I, that was such a great way to start out in the field. So for me, joy at work is being able to be silly, um, being playful while I'm co-designing with somebody, right. um, letting, you know, them having fun too, and not feeling you have to look miserable to be productive. <laughs> well, we talked about that earlier in, in that there's not enough joy in our workplace. And I think you could probably say that about a lot of industries. That's not unique to us, but um, it's kind of funny that that a lot of managers feel that if people are are messing around having fun, that that's not being productive when all of the statistics are, are quite the contrary to that. It's like if you have a fun environment, if you have you know, that pool table maybe, or that, that kind of a way or a connection point in your office, it, it increases productivity. You, you take that 10, 20 minute break, but then when you get back, you're productive, you're loyal, you're, you know, you have a smile on your face. It's just, it just seems like a, a different feeling altogether. Yeah. And when I work with clients and workplace, one of my favorite questions is, is finding out like, where do you get your aha ideas? And, you know, it's never working ferociously. It's, yeah. it's kind of when you allow for the pause, when you're jogging, taking a shower, meditating, walking on the beach, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, we, that's where we're innovative. Yeah. And I guess, how do you, how do we as a team advocate for our joy in the workplace? Like what, what are some things we can do, um, you know, to really, I guess, start this conversation for a lot of us, this isn't something we talk about. You know, we put our head down in construction and we get busy and a year goes by really quick. So uh, this is something that we might have to really kind of be intentional about. How do we do it? You do have to be intentional. And I think the most important first step is you start with yourself and you you know what brings you joy. What brought you into the field? Um, not everything has to be a big vocation, but you know, some people like to build and work with their hands and right. think about what sparked you as a child, maybe to do that. Um, but you have to start with yourself and then it can be safe for others. Yeah, it's funny. I, I was interviewing a friend, Brent Darnell, um, and on our podcast, and he had said something that was so true. He, he says he usually tells his clients, he said, you know, name, name your favorite project you've ever done ever built. And, you know, so they say it, and then he asks a follow up question. He says, okay, how were the relationships on that project? And it's always, oh man, it was great. We had the best time. We, it was just such a fun time. 
And then he said, now name your least favorite project. How are those relationships? And they go, yeah, yeah I, see what you're, I see what you're doing there. Um, but there's a kind of a tendency to, um, you know, be project driven for us as opposed to relationship driven where, you know, if we don't have those those good relationships, well, not only your your peers, but the labor side, um, it's just not going to be fun, not going to be fun for them. It's not going to be fun for you. And then it comes becomes about the money. Right. You know, I mean, when that, it's all about relationship that book working, that was the big takeaway. It's like you could be reading about a doctor or a lawyer who went into the field, not because they were called to, but for external reasons. And you have somebody else who's um, working at a market as a cashier, but they know themselves and right. they're extroverts and they just love connecting with people. And, right. you know, guess who's happier? Um, yeah. yeah. No, no doubt. I mean, it's it's just, you know, you know, part of the reason we wanted to talk about, you know, labor as a commodity and things like that is because this is what we've done in construction for for generations, you know, not not decades, generations is that we've made it about the money. We've made it um, where the labor force chases money around because we haven't created loyalty. We haven't developed them. We haven't asked them about their family. We haven't talked to them about their son's baseball game. We, we're, we don't do anything about, typically, I'm generalizing, we don't talk to them like they're people or friends. We talk to them like they're, they need to do labor. Yeah. And then we get mad at them for chasing the money. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but this is what we've been doing. Yeah. And you know, when you're being commoditized, I mean, it happens everywhere. Like even as a designer, it's like, it sucks the soul out of you when you're seen just as a commodity, even though that in some way is a reality of the situation. Um, but you and I had a great conversation just about sharing stories and, and it's all about relationships. That's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and, you know, kind of to, to end with that, it was like, you know, this is an opportunity for us. So, as a management team, you know, we're all managers here typically. What what do we do um, with this opportunity? And we kind of talked about we got to be intentional, but, you know, maybe we can talk about a few few examples of how we can take this as an opportunity back to our, our, our team and really start to implement this today. Are you asking me like how or? Yeah, yeah. I kind of so feel like we could that? brainstorm with the audience if we had more time, but yeah. I, I think the... The, what's coming to me is just asking questions. Yeah. Stop talking, ask questions and listen. Just listen. Yeah, exactly. And we kind of talked about that before when, you know, when you ask a question to, you know, I guess a macho construction guy, you say, how are you feeling or how are you doing? And then you have to say again, no, how are you doing? Because, you know, the, the basic stuff is not just, um, you know, surfacey. We have to really get back down into the nitty gritty and and, you know, regarding that poll question, if you guys see the little poll thing on the right side there, I kind of wanted to see if we got some feedback because I'm, I'm curious um, what most people say. I, I'm I'm guessing we're going to be in the same ballpark and that people probably are, are responding the same way. And that that's what I'm seeing here is building relationships. Building relationships is um, is one of the most valuable pieces to our job. But yet at the same time, um, you know, we don't talk about it enough. So I think what you do, you know, being a being a whisperer in your job and and maybe, you know, leading your team in discussions like this, we don't have a lot of them. So I think we have a lot to learn from you. And I would say keep going with that, uh, with, with speaking, getting in front of 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 not only women in construction, but all of us, because yeah. it's something that we have struggled with our entire lives. And now we're coming up with this new generation of managers that are are open and, and willing to to change it up a little bit. Well, you know, we don't have to go back to the old school how Papa Bob did things. Now we try to figure out um, the, you know the new way, and yeah. the new way is going to be the only way we're going to be able to attract millennials and a diverse workforce. We're not going to be doing it with you know being a hard ass all the time. No, it's all about empathy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, you waiting through those uh, technical issues, and that I I really enjoy our conversations both offline and online, and we'll keep the conversation going. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. 
Well, we'll get right uh, right into our our second speaker here. Um, it's gonna we're gonna switch up the topic quite a bit. Um, we have Tim Spinlove with us, and he has over 15 years of successful sales, talent acquisition, business operations, and leadership experience. And over the course of his career, Tim has uh, become a trusted advisor to business owners, C-level executives, HR, and financial professionals. And he ha he does work in the construction sector uh, as well as others. Um, but he has advised on recruitment best practices and assisted with the implementation of strategic recruitment programs to help drive performance internally for stakeholders. He's out of Canada, but we're nice to him, right? He's just in Vancouver, that's not too far. Tim focuses his efforts on recruiting for the real estate development and construction sectors across North America. And we welcome, and please help me welcome, Tim Spinloff. Hey there, Tim, are you there? There he is. There's that handsome face. <laughs> How you doing, bud? How was, how was, uh, Thanks for how was Canada this morning? Yeah, I'm up here in Vancouver. Typical uh, rainy day up here, unfortunately. So okay, yeah, we're yeah. 89. It's okay. Are you uh, are you watching the hockey now? Is that is that? Oh yeah, that was last. It was a marathon last night. Let me tell you, a lot of a lot of overtime uh, happening last night for sure. Yeah, I, I saw a little bit of that triple overtime game. Um, you know. I know both of our teams are not in it, so uh, we don't really have a lot to to root for. But it's always fun to watch hockey playoffs, right? Yeah, it's in Canada now. It's all about making sure the Maple Leafs don't win. So that's, <laughs> that's the season. That's the season well, we're in. So that's not a good start for you, then. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being here. How did you uh, get started in the construction industry? Yeah, I, I mean, I started uh, I started working with construction companies directly back in probably 2007, 2008, kind of right around the the economic uh, fall of, of that year, but uh, I was working with a pre-employment screening company. So selling things like, you know, criminal record checks, reference checks, credit checks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, worked with a lot of construction professionals then. Um, and then since I've kind of transitioned into sort of the talent acquisition and HR consulting space, done a lot of work, um, a lot of recruitment, uh, done everything from, you know, recruiting accountants to, project managers, construction managers, site superintendents, um, coordinators, also on the real estate development side, um, you know, handling recruitment efforts for that. So since about 2008. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting time to get started in recruitment, right? <laughs> well, it was. I mean, it, and no one falls into recruitment like you or no one like there's no test. Luckily for me, there's no test to get into recruitment. So I can kind of okay. just get in there and, and do it. But you talk about building relationships and that's that's what I'm good at. And, it, you know, it, it kind of makes sense from a from a you know personality standpoint is uh, talking to people every day and getting to know them and, and you know, sort of having those conversations. And um, it's a it's a good fit. Yeah, it probably wouldn't work too good if you're not a networker, right? I mean, no, they no, have really. to trust you. You, you. you know, you have to be taking Zoom calls, and you know, I I can see how you you would have to be a people person, otherwise they're not going to trust you, right? Yeah, I mean, being a recruiter is a, a combination of a you know being being able to build relationships, but you're also you know a bit of a counselor, a bit of a motivator. You know, there's, there's multifaceted aspects to it. That's for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. So how do companies overcome the struggle of recruitment in this this kind of market that we're at today? Yeah, I mean, that's big right now, right? Um, coming out of the, uh, the, you know, this whole COVID thing, you know, the, the landscape has certainly shift culturally, not only, you know, in Canada, but in the US, of course, the, the political climate on, on both sides of the border. Um, <clears throat> but as, as, you know, small to medium businesses, I think there's, there's probably kind of three things that I would maybe point to answering that question. And first one is, you know, utilizing your established relationships. Like you're talking to people every day, you're talking to, right. you know, you're talking to sub trades, you're talking to, you know, lawyers, you're talking to whoever you're talking to throughout the day, right. you know, utilize those relationships, reach out through the, through the network and, and see, see who they know um, and, and utilize that, uh, that relationship base. Um kind of in the same vein, like business or, you know, college um, relationships that you have a lot of uh, alumni networks that, uh, that you can reach out through, yeah. um, you know, and employee connections, your, your employees are a, a vast network of, you know, of, of talent as well. So utilizing who they know in the marketplace is a, is a very strong tactic at the moment. Yeah. Um, 
And this one's a little bit off the mark, I think, or a little bit, um, a little bit of a, a tricky one for for some companies. But I think when you when you talk about utilizing your employees to to sort of drive that recruitment effort, incentivize your employees to do to do those efforts for you. Because if you just say, "Hey, who do you know?" they'll be like, oh, "I don't know. Let me think about it," and you'll never hear from them again. Right. But if you say, "Hey, I'll give you here's a five hundred dollar Amazon gift card." You know, that's that's a little bit of a different uh, different story. So what a lot of companies will do is incentivize their employees to say, if we hire someone that you refer to us, if they're here after their three month probation, we'll give you X, Y, Z. Yeah, that's that's a unique one. I You know, with this pandemic thing, I, I've been trying to figure out this mass exodus thing we're seeing, like people are changing careers at record levels. I, I saw an article yesterday where it said. 11.5 million positions listed as available in March, which is a record. And then the amount of employees quitting is still very high as well. So I'm like, now, like, is it just that we all had time to, to sit and think about what we value or what are you seeing? Why are people quitting and moving on? Well, I think a lot of people have, have had the opportunity now to, to kind of do the home work thing right and they've, they've kind of had an opportunity to if you know unfortunately if they got laid off or whatever they've had some time to you know get some some support from the government in, in terms of being able to stay home and still kind of get some money coming in the door and allows them to maybe you know retrain upskill um reevaluate kind of where they are in there you know and we talked about it just now like what makes me happy going to work if i'm an accountant and i hate doing numbers but i just kind of did it because that's what dad told me to do yeah. now i want to be a pilot like let's go, let's go be a pilot. Right. So right. I think a lot of it is, is alignment with kind of what you love alignment with personal values is uh, is a, is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of kind of what people are looking for, obviously the, the remote work people have done it now and they've kind of proven that they can do it a little bit different in the construction world, of course, because you've got, you can't, build a house at home. <laughs> right. So a little bit of We're a, working on that. We're working on that. Tim. Yeah. The, the AI stuff and the yeah, 3D printing, whatever. That's right. Um, but yeah, like, but when it comes to remote, you can also offer kind of some, some flexible options for, for employees uh, as well. They're looking for growth, you know, continuous learning. Uh, they, people don't want to be stagnant anymore. They don't want to be a project coordinator for life. They, they kind of want to expand, expand their, their uh, personal learning. So that's, that's a big key factor to keep in mind salary of course everyone's you know <laughs> things aren't getting any cheaper anywhere in the world so you know yeah, making sure you've got a competitive salary and um people aren't afraid to move anymore they you know they're they're not going to put up with crap that they they don't agree with or they're not aligned with and the the days of people lasting 50 years with an organization are, are long gone like if you have someone for five years you're in pretty good spot that's a good point i, I totally forgot about the you know, with the remote comes the moving. Like, you know, I can still, you know, have a job in California, but go move to uh, Idaho, you know, which yeah. is what we're seeing in California. There's a lot of people moving out. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, I guess the difference is like, we're on the heels of like this kind of economy that feels a little weird, you know, but the difference from in 2008, it, there was no jobs, no. right? Which is like when you were recruitment, which is hilarious. But now it's like there's a record number of jobs that yeah. we have a weird economy. It just feels different, maybe better because there are all of these jobs out there that if you needed to, you could go get a different one. Yeah, absolutely. You bang on. Yeah. Cool. So um, tell us a little bit about how do we attract talent to our small companies? A lot of us on, on the call are in the medium size area. So, you know, what are some things that we could do? Yeah, I mean, it's a big question. I mean, that, that's that's the question, I think, right now for a lot of construction companies. Um, but there's a few things like recruitment really is marketing at the moment. Like you've got to be able to kind of be marketers in the marketplace. So telling your story, like, why should I come and work for, you know, your organization? Like, what is it about, you know, what is it about you that aligns with what I'm looking for? So telling your story, having a bit of a brand voice in the marketplace, right. that's very marketing. And that's not my, not my area by any stretch of the imagination, but it's part of it. And that's right. sort of that, that brand recognition in the marketplace. Um, something Matt could probably speak to at, at length in terms of, you know, developing that brand voice and that, that brand recognition in the marketplace. But that's yeah. sort of step one, like who are we and what do we do and how are we portraying that to, to the general public? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, when you're looking for a specific skill set or a specific role to fill, you know, being very clear about what that role is. Like, 
and and step one is if you're going to be advertising that role, be very specific on the job title. Like if you're going to hire someone for, you know, if you need an HR person, don't put a job advert on Indeed or Monster that says, you know, the morale officer, because no one's searching for that. They're searching for HR coordinator jobs, right? Like it's, it's, it's very search engine optimized stuff, right? So if you're searching for PM, project manager, don't put PM, put project manager, yeah. um, you know, and the keywords in your uh, job ads are very important because it picks up on, is it residential? Is it commercial? Is it civil? What is it? Right. Um, make sure that you're very clear on the day-to-day tasks with those postings as well. Um, don't make them lengthy, just short, sweet, make sure that you're sort of outlining a good picture. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you've got to kind of fish where they fish, right? So you've got to put your fishing pole in the right ocean. So if, if you're looking for, you know, trades professionals, you're probably not going to want to post a job on LinkedIn, A, because it's expensive and B, because they're probably not there. Right. So you've got to, you got to know where your people, people play. So, you know, when it comes to construction professionals, there's been a lot of success with, you know, Craigslist postings, Facebook groups, um, you know, those types of, those types of activities. Social media is a big one for, for searching for people in that realm. Okay. Um, again, kind of how do you attract somebody? Like show your company culture. What are your values? What do you, you know, what are you as an organization? So I would prefer so- to bring someone into an organization who is slightly less talented, but fits the culture um, versus someone that's extremely talented, but not a fit culturally at all, because that's just going to explode in your face. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's funny that I see this happen a lot in construction and that's, you know, part of your, your culture comment is like, you know, lack of pictures, you know, team pictures, team building things, you know, like you said, if, if this is what your guys are about as a team, um, talk about it, talk, take pictures of your, what you guys did at that charity organization, the team pictures, the family pictures, like if that's important to your business, you know, be about it. There's like this kind of misnomer about, Hey, we don't want, we want to look big, right? We don't want to, you know, there's no real families involved here. This is just all just a giant corporation here. We want to appear big nationwide. You know, I, I, it all comes down to people eventually, right? You buy the person eventually. So I, I just like to get in front of that. And obviously I'm, I'm a three generations of business. So we're, we're all about that story. But I think a lot of people fail when it comes to just having pictures and uh, ideas and thoughts about what we do, you know, for fun. And the other part of that too, is like, you know, be open and honest from, from the get go, because if you're going to lie up front, they're going to join you and then find out it was all a lie and leave anyway. Right. right? So there's no point in wasting your time recruiting because recruiting has become extremely difficult finding someone on a lie because you've said we're the greatest thing ever. And we've got all these processes and computer programs and, and then you don't have those things and they get in there and like, well, I joined because of those three reasons and you don't have any of them. So, yeah, exactly. And, it, you know, I'm sure you get this a lot and we'll talk about millennials in a second, but you know, the, the whole question about no one wants to work. Um, I think there's, there's some truth to that. I mean, if you look at the numbers, right, it, it, it does feel like there's a lot of people who maybe can work, but aren't, or, or, you know, I guess, how do you respond to that? And how do you motivate people to like, Hey, here's what you need to do then. Yeah, I think, you know, we're coming out of that a little bit now with with kind of the subsidies are being kind of cut off and, and things like that. So people are going to have to start working again, which is which is great for the, the trade sector specifically. Um, but I think, you know, people want to work. You just have to find those people. And are you targeting perhaps some under underrepresented groups that perhaps could do a great job? So here in Canada, we get a lot of um, a lot of engineers immigrate into Canada. OK. And, um, you know, a lot of the struggle in, in mindset from a, from a business standpoint is, well, they don't have any Canadian or U S experience. It's like, well, if they equate their PN from Romania or UK or India, wherever they're coming from, and they've built, you know, massive buildings in Dubai, like, yes, they need to come up to speed on the building codes and things like that. But is that something that you can offer them as part of your your package saying, hey, we'll we'll bring you up to speed if you're, you know, once you kind of go through your screening. So right. um, but developing relationships with with, you know, you know, high schools or, or community colleges or immigrant centers, places like that are, are a goldmine for 
uh, for people that are looking that want to work. These people want the opportunity to work, right? right. Um, so kind of targeting people that may be underrepresented in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, and the other part of it goes back to sort of, again, that, that marketing comment, like what are your differentiators in the marketplace? Like, do they not want to work or do they not want to work for you? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Good, good point. And I mean, and that kind of segues right into the millennial thing is, you know, I'm one of the few protectors <laughs> of, of them. Um, I think that, you know, we, we need them. I think all of our industries do. I don't care what industry you're in. Um, we need them. And so it's really more about um, how do we communicate with them? We already talked about the culture piece, but isn't that the biggest piece that we, you know, they're not always about the money. They're about, you know, what are we doing as a brand? What, what where are we headed? What do we give back to? They just have a different mindset. And maybe that's because they, they looked at the 2008 thing. I don't know what it is about it, but it feels like they're, it's more than the money for them. Yeah, it absolutely is for them. Yeah, you, you're bang on. I think there's probably, I've got six things here that I'll maybe point to. First one being, again, learning. We kind of talked about that earlier. There's there's a constant want to to learn and develop and grow their their skill sets and experience base. Right. The second one is purpose. So I, I found an interesting piece from Deloitte that said, millennials hold businesses to high standards when it comes to their positive impact on society. 80% of young millennials say that they would be more motivated and committed at work if they felt their employer made a positive impact on society. So do you have volunteer programs? Do you give employees the opportunity to take a paid day off to go and volunteer with big brothers and sisters or the food bank or, you know, whatever is important to them. Right. Um, at Christmas time, maybe you uh, or leading up to Christmas, you say, okay, this year as a company, we're going to donate X number of dollars to uh, to a specific charity of, of the employers or the employee group's choice. Yes. Here are three choices or ask them which, which, you know, charities you'd like to, to kind of get involved with. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing is again, that flexibility remote stuff, again, a roadblock that we have to overcome in construction because it's, it's, it's a little bit of a different oh, situation, sure. but again, offering some flexibility, whether that's you know, vacation time, like I said, volunteer days off family, you know, family time, whatever. Right. So there's, there's right. some options you can do with, with that flexibility piece versus the remoteness. Um, the fourth thing is they're looking for a responsibility. So as they kind of enter the workforce, they're looking to be empowered to, to speak up and, and manage projects and, and pieces of things. Um, they want to take the lead on important tasks. So that's, that's a big one for them as they're kind of, um, you know, coming into the workforce. So I would have your managers be very encouraging to, mm -hmm. to that group of letting them speak up, letting them kind of take the, you know, take the bull by the horns on, on certain things and, and have them make decisions and have them fail and have them learn from those, those failures as a, as a right. prime opportunity, as a, I mean, building a house, you don't want them to, you know, to too, too many mistakes, but you, you kind of get what I'm saying, right? We're having right. them a bit, right. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, you know, fifth thing, manager employee relationships. They want a boss that they can trust someone that they feel they can be comfortable talking to. I think we talked about that previously as well, kind of building that relationship piece with, with your employees. Um, and the last thing is perks, right? Like everyone loves perks, right? Like who says no to free snacks or like a barbecue on site one day. And like, I'm, I'm down for that for sure. Let's, give yeah. some, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think there, there's a lot to that. I mean, you know, as I was saying with Annette, like the, the whole, you know, pool table in the lunchroom that, you know, that kind of thing. I think a lot of people in construction think that's like, you know, we're not being productive here. You guys, you know, we have a job to do, but there's something to that. Like, I know I'm more productive when I take a break, whether that's, you know, taking a walk or getting outside for a second. Like if I'm just putting my head down all day, I will have probably several hours of staring at things, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing with the, the, the perks thing is it, it's, it's very personal, right? Like I'm 41. I don't like uh, if you were to cold call me as a recruiter and say, Hey, like we do like beer Fridays, you know, downtown Vancouver, which is like an hour from my house, like beer Fridays, the whole team is there. We've got a ping pong table, like dogs in the office, like whatever. It's awesome. Right. I'm 41. I don't need any of those things to be happy at work. Like <laughs> leave me alone and let me do my job. That's what I want at, my, <laughs> at this stage in my life. Right. Like I don't want to drive downtown. So that's, a, that's not a no go. I don't want a uh, Friday afternoon. I've got two young kids at home. I don't want to be downtown till like seven 30 at night drinking. Like that's not right. Thing, right? So it's very, it's, it's very personal. Right. So as a, as a leader, as a manager of, of, of a, as, of a team, you've got to kind of have 
those conversations with people like at the interview stage, like, tell right. me about you. Like what, what's, what drives you? Like, what's your motivating? Like if we have perks, what kind of perks would you want? Like what would, what would make you be like, yeah, this place, I, I need those. This is what I need to be happy at work. Like that's all part of building out a, a strong interview process so that you're weeding those things out and building your culture. And, and it's got to be evolving. It's got to continuously grow because the millennials are going to come and then it's going to be the next wave. And they're going to be very different from the, you know, it's going to be, it's all, it's constantly changing. So right. having constant communication on those things is going to be very important. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I imagine, you know, your group, you guys have like a nice template to use or good questions, good, you know, those leading questions and, you know, I mean, engaging with, with talent to really find out if they're a fit, you know, I have no skills there. I mean, I think the only two skills I have is just asking questions and hoping I ask the right ones. But, you know, I think because we're busy as a construction industry, is it now a great time to 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 use a firm like like DMC to 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 help? Because, you know, it's almost like learning a whole new skill. I'd rather just pay someone to do it than and then fail and do it myself. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to sit here and toot my own horn, but like, recruitment is not easy. It's very time consuming. You don't want to just post and pray because you're just going to, you're going to a waste your time on spending money on a job board. That's going to get you nothing in terms of return. B you're going to have to go through all of the resumes that you get. And that's not a simple task, regardless of what platform you use, whether that's indeed monster LinkedIn, whatever, like you've still got to do multiple clicks and scroll and whatever. And right. You know, you could put, it doesn't matter. Like I've, I've posted for, uh, what's a good example, like construction accountant, and I will get artists, I will get restaurant workers, like, it, they're just going to apply without kind of reading the job and, and hope they kind of get a call back. But you've got to go through the, the monotony of going through that as a business owner, you're probably doing that after hours on family time, right up until like, midnight, scrolling through all these resumes. And, you know, you could have 50 resumes in there, and 49 of them are terrible. And you've just wasted an hour and a half, two hours of your time scrolling through resumes that make no sense for the job that you posted. So yeah, I mean, having a, having an agency partners is definitely, you know, an advantageous thing to consider. Now I would encourage everyone to kind of seek out someone that's got a niche in construction specifically based on what your needs are. Right. Uh, the other thing is, is maybe it's not a permanent employee that you need right away. So thinking about using not temp agencies, but using a, a construction recruiter that can get you someone on maybe a contract or a temp to perm, uh, temporary to permanent uh, opportunity. So, you know, you're not covering the costs of all of their insurance and things like that. So the, the agency can take that responsibility on, you're just paying the fee to have them on, on site with you. And if they pass a three month, whatever, yeah. then you hire them on full time and then they become your employees. So there's, there's certainly, certainly ways that you can, can utilize those relationships to, to benefit the, the recruitment piece for sure. Yeah. And the other piece that I wanted to know about is, you know, I think twofold. One is like, you know, you kind of talked a little bit about being specific in, in what we write, but also, you know, I think we're missing the opportunity on our websites as well. So, you know, we talked about the culture piece, but, you know, having a way of capturing people's information on your, on your website, you know, whether that is a form or whether that is like, you know, an online thing that, that they can fill out. Um, I think that a lot of us miss that. Like, you know, we just expect people to, to scour your website and find an email or something. I don't know. But what, what are we missing there? Yeah, again, that's that's a, that's a marketing thing, right? Like, and, and I can absolutely introduce a great company that I've worked with and recommended in the past to, to help you. I think the big thing is get your website mobile. If it's not mobile, uh, optimized, get, make sure that it is because people are on their phones and iPads and stuff more so than sitting down at a desk, right? So if they're on the bus or whatever, they're scrolling and whatever. So make sure you're, you're mobile optimized. But yeah, I mean, just again, display what you're about as an organization. So whether that's links to your Instagram page or your Facebook page, and there's pictures and there's videos and there's, you know, maybe you're just doing some selfies talks on site and you're just being like Instagram live and be, I know Instagram live can maybe for some of the older folks in the, in the room, it's kind of yeah. crazy, but you know, just <laughs> selfie videos and posting those, it doesn't have to be anything that's produced. It can just be, you know, short, sweet stuff that just says, Hey, like we started this job, it sucked at the beginning, but now, Hey, check out this custom built house that we've been in. It's a beautiful thing that you've just built. Right. Right. Um, and it's not necessarily, you know, if you're, you know, recruiting and, and looking for, for talent on your website, it's, it's not selling the, the job as a carpenter. It's, it's selling the client's dream of a custom home. 
right? It, uh, it's not what you sell, it's how you sell it, right? right so right. You're, not, you're not selling the, you're not selling the job, you're selling the, you know, the, sort of the partnership and the dream for, for the client, right? So it's, yeah. it's kind of a, it's an interesting marketing conversation for sure. Yeah, for sure. And you, you mentioned a couple of places that we go to post. So I, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is going to be is going to be tough sled and it, it is super expensive. I've dabbled in that before. Um, so you're saying where are some of those spots to go for construction? Because I think that's one that we always struggle with. We're getting hammered with ads, by the way. You know, indeed, like there's just like constantly people are are telling me this is where you would go to post. And and I guess, you know, what, what are you finding for construction? Maybe you know, talk about not only the labor side, but, you know, maybe that management level as well. Yeah. On the labor side specifically, again, it's, it's kind of playing in, in the same, same pools as they're playing. And so like, I would probably recommend things like Craigslist, um, you know, that'll cost you, I think 25 to 50 bucks, depending on, you know, the kind of the package you choose for Craigslist. That's, that's got some, some good traction for me on the trade side. Um, social media groups are, are excellent. So, uh, I'm in, I'm included on a lot of, or I've joined a lot of Facebook groups, um, even though kind of the, the younger crowd is kind of shifting away from, from Facebook, there is still a lot of traction in there again for some of the older generation. So if you're thinking about hiring a, you know, a skilled carpenter and you're, you're thinking it's a millennial, but you're, you're not thinking about the, the people that are 40 plus and they're kind of out of work and they're, they're the ones on Facebook that you can grab and, and have a really good experience person come join you. So those types of, you know, those types of groups, social media uh, stuff will, will really help. Indeed is the big one. It's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but again, playing where everyone plays, everyone plays on Indeed. Like if you go and search for a job, where do you go? Everyone goes to Indeed automatically, yeah. Indeed, yeah. right? Or Monster, like Monster is a little bit lower, but Monster is another one. Um, but understanding, like you have really have an understanding of, of where your where your target audience is. So are you looking for a dem specific demographic or whatever? Maybe you're utilizing, like I said, community colleges have, have, you know, internship programs that you can join. Um, you know, they also have lots of job boards that, uh, that you can take advantage of for free a lot of the time because they right. want their students to get hired right away, right out of school. Sure, sure. Building those relationships within your community groups, you know, like I said, those immigration centers, the community centers sometimes have some, some career, you know, pages and things like that that you can take advantage of for free. So just kind of feeling out the community and kind of getting a sense for, for sort of those larger groups that you may be missing. Cool. Right on. I love that advice, man. I, you know, my head swimming on right now. I, I want to go hire somebody. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, it sounds exhausting, but um, thank you so much for being here. I think you mentioned that you, you might have a leave behind that what we'll do is we'll, we'll email out to everybody. Yeah. What was that? Uh, what was that form or handout you had ready? Uh, yeah, kind of just just six tips on on how to to attract top talent for your for your construction organization. So just okay. nothing nothing too in depth. Just some tips for you to kind of take with you as you kind of move forward. And if if anyone has any you know burning questions or burning needs, then I'm obviously a phone call away, happy to to help advise and jump in on any recruitment activities that uh, that you guys may need. Cool. And what's the best way to get a hold of you? Is that LinkedIn or email or what? What do you? Yeah, like? I'm on. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, I can. I can send you my uh, my direct. While well, you've got my direct contact information via email and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. When you're done here, just drop that in the the chat just yeah. to, to make sure people have it. And then, you know, and you do the same. And and if you guys have questions for the speakers, um, feel free to to hang around for a few minutes and join their table. Ask a question in the chat if if you want as well. But, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to be doing this uh, once a month. We thank you, Tim and Annette, for being here. I know it's where all of our time is valuable, but we just appreciate your guys' insight and uh, education. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Thanks. And then, uh, everybody, before you go, um, you know, our next event is going to be June 8th. We already have the, uh, the topic. It is how to solve construction's branding problem. We're going to have two dynamic speakers, including Jennifer Todd of LMS General Contractors. And you're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. We're gonna get into you know how we're missing on the branding side, as well as a lot of diversity topics. You know, Tim kind of mentioned earlier that, that we need to explore other markets that we have in construction, and that is women and minority groups. So we're gonna talk a lot about that on June 8th. And um, we're gonna go ahead and put that in the chat, um, the place to register. And it is, it is the USCZ Executives Live um, air meet link. Go ahead and click on that link. Register now. That way it's on your calendar and we don't have to go chase you. 
we will email you as well with, with some more information. But thank you so much for being here. Again, if you want to hang around and chat with any of us, uh, we're going to be at one of our tables. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.